This is unit 6-2, exploring areas using rectangular approximation. Now, as you recall from our last lesson, we were talking about graphs where the vertical axis is velocity or speed and the horizontal axis is time. And we, we were referring to this as a velocity curve and we were asking ourselves, how would you calculate the area under the curve in order to find the distance traveled, okay? So in our previous lesson, we had a pretty much of a uh, straight horizontal lines and we were able to get rectangles and get the actual area under the curve. But in this case, we have a, a curved line, all right? And we're looking to find the uh, distance traveled between say two o'clock and four o'clock. So how are we gonna go about doing that? Well, initially we might look at creating rectangles. Now, this uh, between two o'clock and four o'clock, say we created two rectangles. Well, you know, we could get somewhat of an approximation. However, as you're gonna see that uh, there's some big areas here, for example, this area right here, as well as this area that up here that aren't accounted for. So therefore, we're gonna take and have uh, a value that really isn't that close to being what it should be. So now let's increase the number of rectangles that we've got. Now here, in this case, we probably would have a better approximation. Uh, our areas that we're not counting would be smaller. They'd be this area here, this area here, here and here. It still wouldn't be that close, but it'd be closer, be better, a better approximation the more the number of rectangles we used. So let's go ahead and actually calculate the area of these four rectangles. Our graph here is f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 5. That's the equation of this, uh, this blue line graph here, all right? And we've got four rectangles, all right? The area of each rectangle is going to be the length times the width. Each of these rectangles happens to be one half unit wide, okay? So you can see here, this is just one half unit wide. Each of these rectangles is going to be. The height, okay, is this right here, all right? And we can get that by plugging in the value two into our equation and that will give me the y value. For example, the first rectangle would be one half times f of two. The second uh, rectangle would be one half times f of 2.5. Then we do one half times f of three. Then we do one half f of 3.5. We'd add all these up and we'd come out with a answer of 41.5 miles that you would travel in between two o'clock and four o'clock. Well, this is an approximation. Let's consider other uh, approximations which might be different or closer. So now let's move our rectangles instead of the height being, uh, for example, f of two, let's move it so that the graph goes through the right uh, side of the rectangle, okay? And so this first rectangle would be one times f of three, and the second rectangle would be one times f of four. It's obvious in this case, we're gonna end up with a amount that's higher than what we would want but let's see how close that is in terms of comparing it to what we got before. So again, we're going to increase the number of rectangles. So now we have four rectangles. Each of them is gonna be one half wide. Now the heights though are different. It's no longer the left side of the rectangle that coincides with the, uh, with the graph, with the curve, I'm sorry but it's now the right side of the rectangle that coincides with the curve. So let's see what we get if we were to take and calculate the areas here. 
Now the re width of the rectangle is the same as it was before. Each of these rectangles is one half unit wide, all right? But now the height is no longer gonna be for this first rectangle f of two, it's gonna be f of 2.5, all right? So we got one half times f of 2.5, then we got one half times f of three, then we got one half times f of 3.5, and lastly, one half times f of four. Now, obviously, we're gonna get a higher value than we got before because now the rectangles are gonna be greater than what the uh, area under the curve is. So now we come out with a value of 53.5 miles. Now, is there any way we could take and get something halfway between these uh, two calculations? of where we place our rectangle. So let's take a look at that. So now we'll place our rectangles so that the graph hits the rectangle at the midpoint of the height, okay? So it no longer is the left vertex or the right vertex, it's halfway between. It's right in the middle of the rectangle. Now it would seem like this would be a better approximation because we have two little pieces here that are greater than the curve, but we have two little pieces which are less than the curve. So maybe they would balance out and we'd end up with a better approximation. Well, obviously I think two rectangles is not sufficient. So let's increase to four rectangles. So now we have our four rectangles. The curve is hitting each rectangle at the midpoint uh, uh, rather than at the left or right side, it's gonna be right in the middle. So let, now let's calculate and see what we get for, for our sum now. Now, our width is still one half, so each rectangle is still one half wide, all right? But now, we're right in the middle, between two and two and a half, we're right in the middle to determine our height. So we have one half times F of 2.5, one half times f of 2.75, one half times f of 3.25, and one half times f of 3.75. And as you can see, we come out with a value that's right in between what we had before, which is probably pretty close to what the area under the curve is. This comes out to be 47.25. So this is probably a better way to take and do our rectangles. Now, obviously, if we increase the number of rectangles to eight rectangles, we'd probably be even closer to the actual value. Or if we went to 16 rectangles, it'd be even closer. But we're just gonna look for right now, for our purposes, at four rectangles, and we can see that we have a value that's half, pretty much halfway between the other two approximations and obviously an approximation that is probably pretty close to being what the actual area under the curve is between two o'clock and four o'clock.